We're now going to have our reading. The reading is from Zephaniah chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The sorrows for the appointed feasts I will remove from you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. At that time I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame and gather those who have been scattered. I will give them praise and honour in every land where they were put to shame. At that time I will gather you. At that time I will bring you home. I will give you honour and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. We'll now uh, hear Paul Wallace, who's going to bring us our message. So it's lovely to be here to be recording a sermon. It's quite strange, really. It's different from what I'm normally used to do, but it's also a privilege, and I recognise that, and I just want to pray, and then I'll start what I have to say. So, Father God, just thank you that through technology, Lord, we can meet together. We can meet together, Lord, and we can just spend time together. And I pray, Father, the words I use, which are of you, Lord, would just touch our hearts. And the words, Lord, would come from man, Lord, would fall to the ground like autumn leaves. And it's a while since I preached on an Old Testament passage. When Zephaniah came up in the readings for this Sunday, I was delighted. Because I think it creates a lovely picture of the Lord rejoicing over us. The Lord, the creator of heaven and earth, is rejoicing over us, which means for all of you out there viewing. You may find that quite difficult to visualise and accept, but it is true. He delights in us. Somebody making those promises sounds too, too good to be true. So we need to check out Zephaniah. Who was Zephaniah and what did he do? Why should we consider him? If he's okay then, what does he teach us? Not that a great deal is known about him, of him. He was a prince of the royal house of Judah and a descendant of King Hezekiah. He began in the early days of King Josiah. He foretold the doom of Nineveh, which came to pass in 625 BC. Read the whole of the book and you'll see that he denounced the various forms of idolatry which was swept away in King Josiah's reign. You might ask, who were the prophets? Why should we even think about them today? After all, this man was writing two and a half thousand years ago. But we need to recognise that the people of Israel had become a nation. They'd been rescued from slavery in Egypt, and they'd been given the law, which forms the basis of their relationship with God. It was part of, an, of a covenant, and if you do this, I'll do that working arrangements. Those of us who are parents must have had the same sort of arrangement with our children. How many times have you said, yes, you can play outside, but you must do your, first, your homework first? Or mow the lawn and then you can have an ice cream. The children of Israel had a covenant with the Lord, which they broke. 
and he had to raise up prophets to call them back to their relationship with God. The word prophet means called by God, and God chose people to follow him and speak into the life of the nation. And it was not an invitation, it was an appointment. These people were appointed by God, and these people would develop a close relationship with God. The words they used would be tested against scripture as a yardstick, because that meant that the words they were saying came from God. So we have young Zephaniah speaking judgment on Judah, Philistia, Moab, and Ammon. And when we get halfway through the chapter, chapter three, the tone changes. We start to see encouragement because God is going to put things right. He will gather the nations together. He will remove the proud, sinful leaders and leave the meek and humble who trust in him. Verse 13 is lovely. The remem remnant of Israel will do no wrong. They will speak no lies, nor deceit found in their mouths. They will eat and lie down, and no one will make them afraid. Do you get that last phrase? No one will make them afraid. Because they are the Lord's, and they trust in him, he will hold them close. It's like a symphony coming to a crescendo. I, can, I, I love Camille Saint-Saëns' third symphony. And you've got that piece of when the organ comes crashing in towards the end. It's a bit like that. And here we have it. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Sing aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord is saying, be glad, celebrate, rejoice. This is so much more than winning a title at the end of a competition. It's more like a period of attrition, a period of wearing down, coming to an end. Think back for an example, like the end of the Second World War, finally finishing. Or to be contemporary. What about coming out of this pandemic, which according to some experts may not happen for a while, but we should be coming out of it. So why should we celebrate? We should celebrate because God is saying to them and he's saying to us that he is with us. He's taken away the judgment of the Jews and there's no need to fear harm. They are safe. So don't let your hands lie limp. Have you seen defeated people? Those queues of refugees or prisoners with their hands lifeless at their sides. Their heads, are bowed, bowed. their heads are bowed. No, hold up your hand in worship. Praying people, pray with raised hands to heaven. And there's more reason to rejoice. The Lord takes delight over his people. His love is such that it quietens us. He rejoices over his people with singing. He deals with all those who cause his people to be oppressed. He removes the burdens from his people. He rescues the lame. He gathers those who have been scattered. He will restore what has been lost. But recognise that may not happen in ways we expect, but it will happen. Here you have not only an image of revival and restoration at the time of King Josiah, a time of people coming back to the Lord of renewed religious fervour, a new love for God. It points also to the victory that Jesus won for us. Two weeks ago, we celebrated Easter. The tomb was empty, the stone was rolled away. God had physically raised his son from death. It points to sin forgiven. It points to victory over death. Jesus went to the cross for you and for me, so that our sins may be forgiven. It points to us as followers of Jesus, being grafted into the Lord's people. We are part of the family. We can know that we are children of God. The worst that stands out for me, however, is verse 17. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. It paints a picture for me. It paints a picture of when my children were young and sometimes they were frightened 
Sometimes they were crying. Sometimes they'd had a nightmare. And they could either come and sit on my knee or on Joyce's knee. And we'd cuddle them. And the fear would go. The fear would go. Because as parents, they knew our love. And this is so much greater. It's because of what is doing for us. What God is doing for us. He rejoices over us. And it doesn't say that life will never go wrong. This fallen world is too severely damaged for that not to happen. The crisis which exists today is a result of the actions of people. People made mistakes. People did things that were wrong. And we suffer the consequences throughout the world. Christians, however, have a confidence which is sure. Do you hear that? It is rock solid. It is built on the historical fact of the resurrection of Jesus. And Christians can find hope and peace in God. He will quiet you with his love. But you have to let him do that. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. No matter what you have done, you can find a relationship with God through Jesus. He is called the Saviour. He is my Saviour. My salvation is a process which will go on till I die, as it will for each one of us. Come to him to know him. Come to him to know the delight he has in you. Come to him that he may quiet you with his love. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Come to the Lord that he may rejoice over you with singing. Amen. And a word of prayer. Father, by your spirit, Lord, just touch each one of us, Lord, at our point of need, that we may know you rejoicing over us with singing. We may know your peace. We may know your joy. Through Jesus. Amen.